there is something about this game mode that makes flying so realistic. I mean, I do say realistic, but I'm not I'm not exactly a pilot in real life, so I mean it seems realistic to me. You guys probably always use third person view when flying, right? But in this game mode, you can't do that. You have to use first person like I'm doing. It is so much harder to track the enemy pilots. You realise when playing, you really do rely on your other senses. So when I'm playing, I'm really using my ears a lot to hear where the enemy aircraft is and then figure out how to turn into him once you know where he is. The nose of my aircraft keeps getting in the way and I almost lost him there. It's quite cool actually, because it ends up being just a battle of the senses. It's a completely new way of experiencing dogfights in Battlefield 1. It's quite cool, and you really do have to use your senses, so you have to stay in that cockpit and use the free look to look around and find your enemies, as well as listening to exactly where they are in the air. And it makes for some interesting dogfights. that dude just tried to jump seat after having taken on all that damage from me. That's definitely not the time to be jumping seat mate. So if you guys haven't figured this out already, this game mode is hardcore mode and there's a lot that's different in this game so when I just jumped into the back seat there and killed that guy so quickly, that's because you get double damage in hardcore mode but there's so much more that's different as well. The idea is that they're making it as realistic as possible so you don't get all these high-tech features that you wouldn't have had in real life, like a mini-map. You don't get a mini-map anymore. Enemies are no longer spotted with a red marker above their heads, which obviously has been so useful when playing the normal game in Battlefield. Uh, but not just that, friendlies don't even have a marker either, which is really frustrating sometimes. Because team killing is on, and I get freaked out a little because... The normal game experience teaches you and your subconscious to always shoot someone if they haven't been marked above their heads with a marker. Because all your team obviously have markers in the normal game experience, so as soon as you see someone in hardcore mode, your temptation is to shoot them. And so, I, you know, a lot of team killing happens and it's quite frustrating. Alright, alright, alright. That was a bad example. But it does happen a lot where you end up team killing someone under genuine circumstances and it's obviously frustrating. But the funniest way to die from team killing is where you piss someone off by accidentally putting just one bullet into them and then they let loose. Alright, back in the air now, and yeah, spotting is, is completely redundant now because it doesn't do anything. You can't spot enemies, and it makes air-to-ground attacks a lot harder. Taking some AA damage here and just executing some wide corkscrews, which is a lot harder in first-person mode. It's harder to tell that you're doing those wide corkscrews. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say wide corkscrews, guys, check out my other videos because it's such a useful feature or a useful tactic even, a useful maneuver for escaping AA flak. 
I cannot say enough how important that maneuver is in this game. Alright, let's run the dogfighter loadout, see what we can do. When you're playing like this, and when you've chosen the dogfighter, you really do feel like you're in that plane, and you're in that sky, and you're all alone in that cockpit. You really do feel like that. There's something really nitty gritty about this gameplay. You really do feel like you're alone up there, and it's really cool. Actually, it's really you don't you don't get this experience in the in the normal game, and yeah, you really do feel like you have to look out for yourself and really look around that plane and and sort of find your enemies. What I really like about it is your lack of visibility, and the enemy's lack of visibility is the same. So you're on a level playing field, so you no longer get locked in those endless circular dogfights because. You just don't have enough visibility to keep those looping dogfights going. It's actually, it's quite easy to just lose someone by just doing a simple turn in the, the other direction. And what that means is you're playing on a level playing field and the skill gap is much bigger. So if you know what you're doing in the plane, you can crush all the enemy pilots. You know, if you know what you're doing, you can get air superiority much easier in hardcore mode. Check out this cool storm, it really makes for a cool atmosphere when you're flying takedown planes. I'll leave you with a couple kills and then we'll come back try the tank hunter loadout. Guys, this is really cool now. Listen out for the enemy aircraft and see why I turn the way I turn. These bombers still do need a couple of passes before you can take them down. We are losing. Alright, let's give the Tank Hunter a go, and the Tank Hunter must be a one-hit kill in hardcore mode on enemy planes. So guys, obviously I've done a lot of videos on all the main loadouts for all the planes on my channel. And I see a lot of you guys asking me to make videos on the Tank Hunter, the one I'm using right now in this video. And guys, I hear you. The truth is, you know, I've not done many videos lately because work, you know, real life work is taking up a lot of my time. But I do hear you and I plan to run a proper tank hunter guide in the near future. You know, I'm just going to start using it and see what I can do. In the past, I've avoided this loadout because it just wasn't capable of scoring as high as the other loadouts. You know, you've seen my bomber videos, you've seen my trench fighter videos, but now obviously the trench fighter is nerfed and 
there's something about the ground support kit that just doesn't feel good when I use it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see I'm gonna start using the tank hunter. Let's see what we can do. And I plan to use it and see if I can get some content out for you guys. Also, I finally bought the premium pass. It's only been nine months since the game release. Oh wow, probably the least efficient decision I've ever made, right? <laughs> There's actually still a lot of people playing Battlefield, so maybe it's not so bad. I mean, PC numbers, I think, are dwindling, but I've seen on the uh, Battlefield tracker that there's still a huge population of people playing on PS4 in general. Uh, you know, PC, I can't seem to get operations uh, going anymore. I mean, I can get it on the core maps, but man, those expansions. I just got this premium pass and I can't bloody play the operations on the new maps. <laughs> it's so annoying. It must be fine on the PS4. I see the PS4 have got, you know, four times the numbers of players than the PC do. So, you guys must have no issue finding operations on even the new maps. You guys have got it good on the PS4. That I mean, that's where the party's at, isn't it? I mean, I do have a PS4, but I don't know if I can bring myself to buy a second copy of the same game on a different platform. I mean, surely I'm just burning money here. But I guess, at some point... If I want to play the game, I guess I'm going to be forced to. I don't know. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you want to play Hardcore Mode, you can go ahead and find it in the server browser section of the main menus. I'll just leave you with a final two kills here. And hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace.